Hi lovelies and welcome back to my channel. Today I am channeling the energy of Nicole Brown Simpson. Um, I have her energy here so I'm going to get straight into it. Please do leave some love down in the comments below. Please do hit a lovely thumbs up if you enjoy this reading. Okay, one of the very first things that um, Nicole actually mentioned to me as she came through was my kids. One of the most disastrous and devastating and upsetting things, sorry, is she's getting, I can feel the emotion. Um, one of the most disastrous and devastating and emotional things about her having to leave this earth, she's saying, correct, to have been taken from this earth, was to have to leave her children behind and she's saying I've missed so many milestones I have missed holding them and loving them and caring about them she's very tearful and I feel very tearful with her um she's drawing me to a marriage so I don't know if one of her children is getting married um, but she's talking, I think it might, might be the daughter because she's talking about not being there to see her walk down the aisle. <sighs> she's telling me that she loved life. She was someone who loved fun and loved to um, experience life. And she's saying, I loved kids, you know, my own I loved but I also loved all children um, because inside I was a real inner child and she's saying that I liked to really um, she, she's showing me her like jumping out at people and really having that zest for life um, she's saying I was athletic I liked walking she's really telling me about herself um, I was athletic I liked walking I liked making friends she was someone who loved people um, she, she's saying I had an amazing group of friends, girlfriends specifically, she's saying I had about six or seven girlfriends and I loved just being in conversation with them. Sorry, I'm really emotional with her because, oh gosh, she's saying she really misses the people that she loved. Um, Nicole had really close relationships with the people in her life. Um, she wasn't just an acquaintance or a friend to someone like if she was in your life like she was loyal she's a Taurus um, so I really do relate to her on that level <laughs> and she's saying yes yeah, stubborn to the bone um, she's saying which is why when I entered a relationship with a man who was abusive and people from the outside could see he was no good for me I followed my heart and I didn't listen and that is a true Taurian true Taurian trait um, but yeah, a real zest for life, loved people, loved being around people, loved making time for people. Um, and one of the things that hurt her towards the end of her life and towards the end of her relationship with OJ is she really got cut off from a lot of people. Um, her relationships became really strained. Um, she felt very on edge. She felt very much like someone was watching her. In fact, she makes me feel like he did watch her. Um, it was getting to the point where she had to hire extra security. She's telling me that she was going to move home. Um, she was in the verge of moving, in the process of moving home. And he knew that and he didn't want that to happen. I feel like she may have even been leaving the state or even the country. She was going to do anything to escape this man because she knew how dangerous he was. Um, I'd been, at, oh gosh. She's saying I'd been belittled and I'd been abused and I'd been used and I was a shell of myself. Um, but my goodness, like the thing that she is the most upset about, the thing that breaks her, the thing that she can't get over is her the people that she misses and the friendships that she misses, the connections. She's saying I've had to watch people grow and I've had to watch people go through life changes and where I would have been the person on the other end of the phone, they haven't been able to call me. Um, she's like, but I've been there with them every step of the way and she's saying, 
I want to thank my friends and my family because still to this day they never gave up on me. Sorry, I just said in my head it's tragic and she's confirmed. She's like, yeah, the loss of my life was tragic. I feel she's mentioning a book to me. So I feel like someone is writing a book specifically about her. I know that, I don't know if it's recently they found her diary entries, but she is making me feel that someone is writing a book specifically of her account. Because I have to say allegedly, and I've explained to her, I have to say allegedly, but she's saying he did do this to me. And when I asked her if there was anyone else around or with him that helped him, she's like, no, he did this on her on his own. But what she does make me feel is that there was another male energy, but she's saying that he waited in the car. It's almost like he was the getaway. So it's almost like someone drove OJ to the house. He went in, committed the murders, and then he left and someone was his accomplice to help get him out. I feel this was a young man, someone who was a bit younger than OJ. She's mentioning the name Christopher to me, but I don't know if that's the man's name. No, I don't think it is the man's name, but there's some, there's some connection to a Christopher here. Okay. She really wants anyone watching this and her reading because we talked about what the reading would be about and I said most people will come here for the OJ thing, they'll want to know what happened and you know one thing she just keeps saying is he did do it to me, he did do it to me, he did do it to me and she knew he was going to do it to her and she, she, she was, she's getting a bit, sorry I'm just going to allow her to calm down because I want her spirit to be at peace, um, but she does feel angry as she says, I told people that he would do this to me, um, I did speak out about it, I did tell people, but she's encouraging and wanting to encourage anyone who's watching this, woman or man, if you are in an abusive relationship and you feel that you can't get out, you can. She's saying I was so vulnerable to leave and she's saying that I was so loving at times I I couldn't believe that someone would do that to me um, and to our kids more than anything you've left them without a mum and she's just saying I miss my children so much because she's saying, I've watched them grow. I've watched them grow from the other side. And even if it's karmic, because I do feel that she believed, yeah, she was a spiritual person. I do feel she believed in karmic energy and all of that. She's saying, even if it's just karmic, justice will prevail. And OJ will live a miserable life. He has a very strained relationship from the children. People know he did it. And that's okay with me. My soul is at peace. Because I know that people know that he did this to me. But she is drawing me again to I feel like, yeah, I did feel a movie to be made, but I feel like that may have already been, okay, she's saying no, there's another movie to be made, because I feel like there might be more evidence. Okay, I feel like someone's going to reopen this case. She, she does make me feel like it's not over. She does make me feel like someone will reopen the case, and she just keeps saying that justice will prevail. There will also be a book written, um, I feel like it may be written by one of her sisters, um, where more evidence will be shared. Again, I've been really drawn to her daughter. Um, I'm not sure if her daughter's getting married or if she's having a baby. There's a big milestone coming up around her daughter, I feel. 
um, and she just wants to make it known that she knows and she's there sorry every time she talks about her children it's every time she talks about her children as you can imagine she wells up <sighs> I have to laugh because I wasn't going to bring it up but she is just saying because she did like to talk she is someone who she liked to gossip, she liked to talk, she liked to sit around and have lunch with her friends and she liked to talk and every time I've get, gotten emotional, if you notice, she's changed the mood and that is the kind of person she was on earth, she was a mood changer, she liked to uplift people and make people happy so she doesn't like to dwell too much on the sadness, she's like I do miss my children very very much but then she went on to say She's like, oh, and Kris Jenner. So she does want to talk about it. I wasn't going to bring it up, but it's her reading and she's led me there. And she just wants to celebrate. She's saying, I cannot believe the Kardashians. She can't believe it. Honestly, she is, she's, she's saying I watch from spirit sometimes and I, I do chuckle to myself because I can't believe those, those little girls that I knew have become such icons. And she's saying and people will have a lot to say about that but you know she's very proud she's very proud um she's actually <laughs> she's got a glass she's holding a glass of champagne and she's toasting so she's saying you know well done um and she is wanting to also tip that toast to chris jenner because she's saying she was an amazing friend um and she was an amazing role model in my life. Every time I talk about someone who she was close to, she gets choked up. It's, it's that connection with her. She, she hates the idea of people feeling like she's not there, that she's not around them, or that, you know, they can't um, access her because she's saying I've watched everything. <laughs> she's saying I have watched everything unfold, and it's as as traumatic as my death was it's been beautiful she's saying to watch from the other side and she's saying and that's the kind of person that I was I always saw the good in people and I always saw the optimism and the positivity and people remember me for this horrific incident but there was more to me than that um I was a good friend I was a good person and I loved you know I loved and that's what matters to me. She's talking about her death being in vain. What do you mean? Okay. She's talking about others, other women, um, and other men. She's talking about domestic abuse. She is wanting to go into that. So this is just a trigger for anyone who is triggered by um, domestic abuse. Um, you know please don't continue to watch if you are but she is just saying if it happened to me it can happen to anyone again she's saying I was a bubbly loving caring kind soul um, this is a, yeah I understand she's saying I'm not I'm not blowing my own trumpet I am simply explaining who I was as a person and I would have always put people before me and I cared, I cared, and I always tried not to hurt people, um, I always tried to be a good friend, so if someone is being destructive and toxic and abusive to you, it's not something you deserve, you haven't done something wrong, um, please seek help, you know, please seek help, she's saying that, and get out, get out, don't wait. She's very proud of, I believe her sister's campaigned for domestic abuse and she's very proud of that. Um, she's saying it's something I would have personally gone on to campaign for had I, had I lived. Um, <laughs> she's saying as much as I love my glamorous modelling career, I had more depth to me than that. But I was about to move on and, and restart my life. Like she was going to move away 
from the home, from the area, from LA and get out. Um, he was just, I feel, I can feel it. I can, she's showing me visions of her walking home into the house and him just be, being sat in the car like he was harassing and stalking her and again she's saying anyone who does that to you is not acceptable and it's not okay. Um, I want people to remember me, she's saying, as a fun loving girl, not just as being OJ's abused ex-wife. <sighs> I love my children, I love my kids. And I've been with them every single step of the way. To say a massive thank you, there's a real big thank you. It was actually one of the first things she said to me, to my family and my friends and everyone who believed in me. Thank you. She's a very humble soul. Very, very humble. Very likeable. Very lovable. Um, she did have a sassy side. <laughs> she is saying, yes, that's correct, but she was just very, I feel, just very full of life and it's, it's, it's tragic, it's tragic. I'm at peace, she's at peace. I feel like you know, sometimes when traumatic um, passings take place, it can take a while for the spirits to really transition, but she makes me feel, yeah, she's saying I was at peace almost, not straight away, but very quickly, because I knew it was coming. She knew it was coming. And I feel like I'm holding this crystal, she's drawing me to this, and she's saying I placed those all around my house, I really believed in spiritual protection, and I still do. She's saying that karma will come and justice will prevail and he will get what he deserves. And thank you. Whew. That was a really lovely reading. Um, she has such a light, beautiful, calm, gentle, but also lovely, um, warmth about her. Feel how much she loved life and how much she loved those who were a part of her life. My goodness, she loved the people in her life. I could feel it. And such a Taurus. Stubborn, sassy, loves life, loved a good time and cared and loved deeply. And that's what she would like her soul to be remembered as. The fun, vivacious, fun loving girl. Thank you so much for being with me today lovelies. I really hope you enjoyed the reading. Please do leave some love down below and I will see you soon for another video. Bye.